the uh, assessment of uh, the leader of the next biggest party in the House of Commons, the SNP's Westminster leader, Ian Blackford, uh, is here with me. Very good evening to you, Mr good Blackford. Evening, David. Now, uh, we heard Richard Bergen there saying, well, no real point in an extension of Article 50. That was the very amendment uh, you tabled this evening, which got kicked out of the park. But why do you think an amendment, uh, sorry, uh, an extension would be worthwhile? Because there are very real risks to the economy and to jobs and livelihoods throughout the United Kingdom. Well, we know that Ford have said that they are threatening to withdraw production from the UK. This is serious. And, you know, I think as politicians, our first priority must be protecting the economic security of our citizens. We know that a no-deal Brexit could cost hundreds of thousands of jobs, and it's the height of irresponsibility for politicians to threaten their constituents. Okay, but I mean, it was a three-month extension. What difference really well, would that we, make in what, practice? Our, our amendment was asking for a minimum three months okay. extension. So it could have been longer for that because we've got to take that risk off the table. I don't believe there is such a thing as a good Brexit. All the scenarios that were laid out by the government last year showed that Brexit would lead to lower growth and the status quo of being in the European Union. And I find it extraordinary that the government and indeed the official opposition are not being honest with people. However people voted in that referendum in 2016, we now know that this mm. is going to be but, painful. But just on that extension, and isn't it the matter that really things have to come to a head? I mean, as it seems, as we've seen over the last six weeks or so, the clock is being run down. And uh, the EU say that uh, the UK side don't really even seem to be serious about negotiating on the backstop. Don't things have to come to a head and that's going to take place in the last week of March? But I think if, when, when, when you look at a couple of things, Donald Tusk has made it clear that the European Union are not prepared to open up the withdrawal agreement. That's for the birds, it's a fantasy. I mean, the Prime Minister is quite simply deluded as she thinks that is the case. There may be some discussions around the political declaration, but the reason that the backstop is there is because of the situation in the island of Ireland for the Good Friday Agreement and making sure that is protected. There is not going to be movement on this. So we are where we are as far as that is concerned. So if you want to protect not having a border in Northern Ireland, then the only way you can do that, in my opinion, is to accept the backstop or to come up with a political position that recognises well, the reality. we've already had those arguments. We've seen what's happened when they've been put to a vote. So, but, in your assessment, what happens well, after that EU summit on the 21st of March? Well, we should not be running the clock down to that extent. Parliament should be voting on this as a priority because when you consider where we are at the moment, it takes around 40 days to ship goods from Japan. Cars, trainers, okay. whatever else that come in. We don't know what the customs regime is going to be when these goods yeah, arrive I mean, in a few those weeks. Those are the arguments that we've heard well rehearsed, but it's what do MPs then well, do MPs, to, to take control away from the executive, well, away from what I, Theresa what I asked, May? What I asked tonight in my point of order is that what mechanisms that we have, given that we're going to be in Parliament next week, we were supposed to be on recess, but the government is bringing us back mm. next week. Let's bring this meaningful vote forward. Let's bring this to an end because we have a Prime Minister that can't show leadership. We have a responsibility as to, as to our constituents We've got a responsibility of taking no deal off the table, which would be disastrous. Well, the, when you mean, have, the weird thing in, in that vote was no deal had already been taken off uh, the table in an amendment you voted for two weeks ago, correct. which was, which was then the in government, the government's motion, which you voted against. Which, which, you no, know, the, I mean, you the, know the public could, the could draw the conclusion that you don't know what you're talking no, no, about. No, not at all, because the government is ignoring this. And when you consider the facts of the matter, that there's this very real risk to food supply, there's a very real risk to medicines, for a government to threaten its people, which is what this one is doing, by not taking no deal off the table, is the height of a responsibility. And frankly, right. it's a prime minister that's not worthy of being in office. Uh, so we are okay. in a serious situation. Parliament has to take back control. We have to put that handbrake on. We have to take no right. deal off the table, which only the hardest of Brexiteers could possibly support. And, and what's the thinking within the SNP at the moment about, um, about Brexit and its impact upon a, a second independence referendum in Scotland? Your party's a bit split on this, isn't there? The, the, there's a view that you should go early on this, even when Brexit happens, or wait and see what the effects are. We're trying to be responsible and protect the interests of all of the United Kingdom and where we are at the moment. But if the UK is prepared hmm. to crash the car to take us out no, of the European know, but we Union... Know, we know that some of your activists but, want to go quite well, quickly, don't they? The, the First Minister has made it clear that given the chaos and given the threat to our economy, that we will make a determination. But I will say this, that if the UK is going to crash out of the European Union, it is going to be demonstrably the case that the economic interests of the people of Scotland are going to be best served by Scotland being independent within Europe, Scotland being a destination so, in so if that crash out happened on March the 29th, what's your estimation then on when you'd get a, 
another referendum we going will, by. We will, we will tell you over the yeah, coming weeks, sure. said Deborah, you'll be the first yeah, to hear. I but we need to, we need to protect okay. the interest of the people of Scotland. Scotland will become independent. I will make that prediction to you. All right. Mr Blackford, very good to see you. Thank you very much indeed, Ian Blackford, uh, leader of the SNP in Westminster. And